In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Praise his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Tell about his glory among the nations, about his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and worthy of great praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are nothings, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Power and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord families of peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and power. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring a gift and come into his courtyards. Bow down to the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble in his presence, all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the well-being of all people everywhere, that they may receive from you all they need to sustain body and life, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the spread of your life-giving gospel throughout the world, that all who are lost in sin may be brought to faith in you, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For patience and perseverance in this life, that we may not lose the hope of heaven as we await your return, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord of life, live in us, that we may live for you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and have sent your messengers to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that by the witness of your church, many may be brought into your kingdom and worship you, the only true God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we hear 
an anthem sung in Spanish by our Sunday school children. Our first lesson from Isaiah chapter 60, and this will also serve as the basis for our sermon today. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is dawning upon you. Look, the darkness covers the earth, and deep darkness covers the peoples, but the Lord will dawn upon you, and his glory will be seen over you. Nations will walk to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Look up, look all around and see, all of them are gathered, they come to you. Your sons will come from far away, and your daughters will be carried on the hip. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will race with excitement and burst with joy, for the great riches of the sea will be delivered to you. The wealth of the nations will come to you. Caravans of camels will cover your land, young camels from Midian and Ephah. All of them from Sheba will come. They will carry gold and incense, and they will announce the good news of the Lord's praises. This is the word of the Lord.
Our second lesson comes from Romans chapter 15, where we see Paul's mission plan to take care of the saints who have become saints through faith in Jesus, to encourage those who do believe in Jesus, and to bring the gospel to those who have not yet heard it. But now I no longer have a place to work in these regions, and I have longed for many years to come to you. So when I go to Spain, I hope to visit you on my way. After I have enjoyed being with you for a while, I hope that you will help me on my journey there. Right now I'm going to Jerusalem, bringing assistance to the saints. For Macedonia and Achaia were pleased to make a certain contribution for the poor among the saints in Jerusalem. Indeed, they were pleased to do this, and to be sure, they are indebted to them. For if the Gentiles have come to share in their spiritual things, then the Gentiles owe it to them to serve them with material things. So, after I complete this project by delivering this fruit safely to them, I will set out for Spain and visit you on the way. And I know that when I come to you, I will arrive with the full blessing of Christ." Now I urge you, brothers, through our Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Spirit, to struggle with me in prayers to God on my behalf. Pray that I may be rescued from those in Judea who are disobedient and that my service for Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints, so that by God's will I may come to you in joy and be refreshed in your company. May the God of peace be with you all. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel reading for today is a familiar reading known as the Great Commission, where Jesus describes the mission of the church. According to Matthew chapter 28, Jesus approached and spoke to them, saying, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and gather disciples from all nations by baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and by teaching them to keep all the instructions I have given you. And surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Arise, shine, for your light has come. We pray. Lord, may the words of my lips, the meditation of my heart, be pleasing in your sight. Amen. There are two things that I hate. Europeans and Christians. The man who said those words to me was slouched in the corner of his local Mexican laundromat. Had a 64-ounce bottle of beer at his side. It was 10 in the morning. I found myself in that little laundromat in a town called Puebla as part of an outreach that me and a few other uh, seminary students at the time were doing to help out a struggling Lutheran church. And so we walked through the streets, kind of awkwardly cornering people to ask them a list of 20 or 25 questions. And when we could get people cornered, we'd pepper them with questions in our broken Spanish in a town where, on the record, at least 90% of them were Catholics, the other 10% were not Lutheran, and it was really, really weird. But then I found this guy, in a laundromat, slouched in the corner, a little angry with me. The two people, young adults, who were taking care of the whole shop uh, across the desk, they just sort of laughed at me and didn't really care about my existence, but this guy, he wouldn't let me off the hook. And after a little while, I I saw that my my list of questions wasn't going to get us too far, so I sat down in the chair next to him and I asked him for a glass of beer. The next two hours we spent just talking. I listened about his life philosophy and the reason why he hated me because I descended from some Germans and why he hated Christians. And luckily for me, I had a little shield with me that day an eight-year-old grandson of one of the local pastors. And the conversation went fine. It was mainly him talking to me. Finally, at the end, I said, you know what? Thank you. Nice to meet you. I got to go back to the church. Before I left, he, he got up out of his seat. And he said, you know what? You're, you're a really good guy. I hope I can meet more people like you. And if I were a little quicker-witted, I, I would have said something like, Like a block from here is a church full of a bunch of people just like me. You should come. Maybe a lost opportunity. Why didn't he come? Why didn't he follow me? You you know, as I I see it, looking back at that moment, he he really had two options, right? He he could remain in darkness, sipping on a 64-ounce beer every morning at 10 just to get through the pain of the day, or he could have given it a shot gone to a place where people so affected by the love of Christ gave him the time of day, a place of hope and joy. (laughs) So why didn't he come? Why why did he choose to to stay in darkness instead of coming to the light? You ever ask yourself this this question, do you you have some niece or nephew or or son or daughter, friend or neighbor, and and you, you think, well, why don't they just come? Why don't they just come? Like they know, I love it at St. Paul's. They, they know the gospel has led me to befriend them even. Why don't, they, why don't they want this? Can't they see that this would be better than whatever it is that they have? You know, this is, this is kind of like the ultimate missionary question. Yeah, I have hundreds of contacts in my, in my prospect list, people I've met through the year, two years that I've been in Detroit. And I go through it and I pray for them. I try to meet with them and call them and text them and invite them and do a Bible study. And I've studied with dozens of families about the grace that God gives to us in baptism and baptize their kids and, their, and themselves as adults, taught them about God. And it's like they don't want it. They just say no. And I ask myself, well, what's the point? Why don't they want what I have? Why don't they want the light? You know, if, you, if you've ever thought like me, you're not alone. You're not alone. Because we both need, we all of us need to hear these beautiful lighted words from Isaiah. He turns on a little light. More than a little light, maybe we could see it like a, the halogen lights, the LEDs, the flood lamps, the sun. He, he lights it all up and just shines it on us this morning to give us pure encouragement from God's word. 
He says, arise and shine. (laughs) And so I want to just for a few more moments this morning bask in these words from Isaiah with you. Just bask in them. So that by the end, you are encouraged as the Christ-like light that you are. So why don't they come? Well, Isaiah helps to answer that for us. In verse 2, this is what he says. See, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the peoples. Darkness hides things. And what does that look like in our spiritual life? Well, if you are a person walking in darkness, you do not know the truth. You can't see it. And so you kind of wander around from place to place until you find a God or bump into one. And then what you do is you continue to live your life to that God to try to make that God happy uh, or try to mimic that God in some way until eventually, unfortunately, that God consumes and destroys you. So what does that look like in real life? It looks like the Muslim imam or the priest that I met back in uh, July. I ended up going out for lunch with him to try to get to know him, learn how I could maybe reach into the Muslim community a little bit. We were eating lunch and he, and he was saying, Pastor, Pastor, you know, we, we just got to do more good in the community. Just more good. I said, okay. But his next words really struck me because he said, if we don't do enough good, look, if we don't do enough, God is going to fry us in his frying pan. Here's a man from, from a war-torn country of Bosnia who had immersed himself into Muslim studies and, and bumped around and, and found this God and was so terrified by him that he thought that that God wanted to destroy him. That's what it looks like to be walking in darkness. Thick darkness covers the people. It's, it, it's sort of like uh, Milton, this atheist Spanish language professor that I met in Ecuador when I studied there for a little bit who hated God. And yet he was terrified that every time I took a picture, some force would leave my camera, go into his body, take out his soul, and suck it back into his camera. He's terrified, walking in darkness. He was so terrified, he he kept looking for other gods, and he found one, and it was the sun. And, And one day he mocked me, saying, what has your God ever done? What has your God ever done for anyone? You're my God? It's given us sunlight to produce crops. It keeps me warm. And the only reason that life exists on this earth is because of it. Even a bright God is still in the darkness. Now Milton didn't get it. Thick darkness covers the people. You see what this looks like? It's like the the man who joined our church a, a while ago and ended up leaving his wife joining himself with a, with a girlfriend, moving in with her, and supposedly drinking some of her blood to make some sort of a demonic pact with her. A thick darkness covers the people. It's sort of like the, the young man who joined our church uh, and he and his wife, or he and his, his girlfriend got married, but the gods of alcohol and his own friends, his buddies, got the best of him and his wife left him after two weeks of being married. Thick darkness covers the people. It's it's like a family. Grandmother, her daughter, and that daughter's son. All baptized on the same day. (laughs) Mother's Day. Latching on to the light of the gospel that they were learning in their Bible study. But it turned out that one of her other sons punched a man in the face. Or I sorry, her, 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 his ex-girlfriend in the face. And they fell back into darkness. Thick darkness covers the people. This is what Isaiah is saying. And, and that's what it looks like. You know, darkness covers the earth and it doesn't take much time to see that. And so when you ask, why don't they just come to the light? Maybe we should be asking, how could they? (laughs) How can anyone know the true God if they are so smothered in darkness? And and that's, that's why Isaiah says these next words. 
because they are just like we were at some point. Whether you remember this time in your life or not. But you were once in darkness too. In fact, Paul writes in Ephesians, you were darkness. So how do we get out? How did we get out? God sent his light to bring us out. Let's listen to these words one more time from Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. He says, Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. These words are all about the light and the glory of God. He wants us to be in his presence. He wants us to experience that glory. And that's why in the Old Testament, for example, when the people were wandering through the wilderness, he had his tabernacle set up and he would fill that tabernacle with all of his glory, his presence. So his presence among the people meant they were safe and saved. And that's why at Mount Sinai, he, dis- he-, he let that thick, dark cloud descend over the mountain so the people could feel the weight and the awe and the terror of his glory. And that's why in Jerusalem, years later, he had his temple built and he filled that temple with all of his glory so that his glory and his presence could be among the people. But he did that for a short time, keeping his glory local in one place until Jesus. Jesus came as a light. Jesus, the one who is one with the Father, the one who is with God from all eternity. Uh, Jesus, the one who who left the riches and the glory and the light of heaven and came straight into darkness, even like the Bible says, became sin for us, became darkness for us. This is Jesus. from 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 the hill where he died in Jerusalem and the tomb where he rose, a light from one city shining to the ends of the earth through the mouths of his witnesses. This is Jesus who rescued you from darkness and brought you into his wonderful light. Now we have this, this jewel, this, this, this treasure in our hands. And it's Jesus, our light. So what do we do? <laughs> Listen to Isaiah, how he finishes. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters are carried on the hip. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you the riches of the nations will come. Arise, shine. Look around you. I love those words. Arise, shine. Look around you. Uh, Glory in the mercies that God has shown not just to him or her but to you to bring you out of darkness and to give you that wonderful light. Marvel at the glories of the person who's with you that God has saw fit to bring them along with you to church, um, even to, to, to be a believer in him. Oh, the mercy of God. I imagine the mercy of God beyond these walls of this church right now, working in the hearts of people. His beautiful light. And rejoice. Let your heart swell with joy. Swell with joy. Look up. Uh, look up at the, at, at the young woman who never really had a home because every six months her family moved her around, who suffered incredible abuse at the hands of her brothers and, and her father, who was never in a school for more than a few months if she was in school, whose sister died from a drug overdose, whose other sister who's still living will probably die very soon, leaving three little girls behind. Look at her and rejoice because God amidst all that darkness brought her out and is now using her as a little mirror of that light in the lives of those around her. Leading her to be married in the first marriage she was ever at was her own. (laughs) Getting her family baptized, her husband and her two children. Using her to be such a witness that eight other family members, adults and kids, were baptized because of her persistence. And when you hear that, let your heart swell with joy as more are led out of darkness and into his wonderful light. 
Look up about you. Look at, look at the, the young man from Bangladesh who lives in Hamtramck that I've been studying with for some time now. He was caught on to the gospel. <laughs> and his, of all of his family, only a couple are Christians. The rest are Muslim. And listen to the fact that most of his family persecutes him. His own brothers persecute him. Uncles persecute him. His whole community in Hamtramck throws rocks at his car, breaks the windows of his house because they hate the fact that he's spreading the gospel. His mother-in-law in Bangladesh last week was axed, axed by people who were angry with her building a church on her property. And let your heart swell with joy because through their persistence, God is leading person after person into his wonderful light out of darkness. And this is how our God works and how beautiful he is. And his light doesn't appear like some spotlight over your heads or missionaries. You, you don't, it's not a glorious task to work with somebody and work them into the faith or introduce them to Christ. The sun doesn't shine an extra hour every day just so you can do that. A lot of times it's mundane and hard, very difficult. Oh, but for the, for the person who comes out of darkness, <laughs> that light is so bright. So arise and shine. For your light has come. Look about you and let your heart swell with joy at the mercies of the Lord as he brings people, just as he brought you from darkness into light. And be radiant. Be radiant as you fix your eyes on your radiance that is Christ. And shine his light to those around you. Friends, arise, shine, for your light has come. Amen. And the peace that transcends all understanding guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us, that his way may be known on earth, his salvation among all nations. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples justly and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. Lord God, King of the universe, let freedom of religion flourish, that the gospel may be freely preached throughout the world. Cast down rulers who oppress their people. Remove governments who oppose the gospel. Bring relief to persecuted Christians. Bless our missionaries and their families throughout the world with courage and joy in their work. Then the earth will yield its harvest, and God, our God, will bless us. Bless our church with pastors, teachers, and missionaries who faithfully proclaim your word. Lead many young men and women to study for the preaching and teaching ministries. By the power of your gospel, motivate them so that they do not become discouraged, but continue in the course you have set before them. And the earth will yield its harvest, and God our God will bless us. 
Hear us as we pray for a family member, a friend, or for others who do not yet believe in you. Make us the answer to our prayers for others. Move us to share the gospel with those for whom we have just prayed. Bless the preaching of the gospel everywhere, here among us and in the far corners of the world. Let your kingdom come to us and to many others. Then the earth will yield its harvest, and God, our God, will bless us. God will bless us. All the ends of the earth will fear him. Compassionate Father, in your mercy you transform even sickness and disease into a blessing for your children. With this confidence, we commit all who are sick or suffering to your tender care. We pray especially for Everine Newman. Provide healing and relief according to your infinite wisdom and boundless mercy. Grant patient endurance if her suffering must linger. Help her find true spiritual strength through Jesus and his cross during this time of physical weakness. By the work of the Holy Spirit, teach her to trust in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Finally, Bring us and all your elect throughout the world to the heavenly home where we will all together know and praise you throughout eternity. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. It will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.